Hey guys, welcome to Classic Nation. I'm Evan, this is Nick. We're really excited to bring you this update on my 1967 Mustang Fastback project. In the last video, you saw the acid dip. Now we've got a whole bunch of parts, including a full floor pan, full suspension. We're gonna be showing you everything that's going on in this car, coming right up. So to recap on this project, I selected street or track as the vendor that will be supplying all of the uh, suspension, steering, and brakes for the Mustang. I wanted to go with a pure resto mod that had a nice combination of street performance that also has some trackability uh, and that would be really comfortable for daily driving. So that's what I picked. First up is this awesome coilover that is gonna be for the front. So Nick, check this thing out. Yeah, Bilstein shock. Full coilover, again, these are parts from Streeter Track, all made in the USA, this thing is nuts. It's gonna be replacing the stock suspension that the Mustang used to have before it went into the acid bath. Nice, and correct me if I'm wrong, this retains the original shock towers and doesn't. you don't have to cut anything out on the Mustang like you would with a, a different suspension setup, right? Exactly, yep. At one point I was thinking of going with a Coyote engine mm -hmm. and I decided to go with the old school Windsor uh, based engine, so with this setup I got to keep the, the shock towers. This is beefy, I yep. like it. That's the front. Here's the matching rear. Again, of note, both of these are height adjustable. So with just a spanner wrench, you can set the ride height of this car up or down, either one. It's got the shaft mount and bump stop right there, which again, makes it so when you bottom out, if you're doing any kind of heavy driving, um, it, it's not real loud in the car. It makes it pretty soft. I like it. Yep. Let's see if you Check this thing out. Here's my rear center section from Strange Engineering. This is an aluminum uh, HD case with a three seven gears. This thing is nuts. Again, Interesting. So, so is this a posi? It is a, it's a limited slip uh, posi. Got exactly. It. Yep. And uh, is Detroit that Detroit True Track? Detroit True Track. Yep. Got it. Yep. Aluminum, which is as strong as the steel, uh, but lighter. So again. You spend a little bit extra money to shave off, uh, I forget, 20 pounds or something like that. Got it. Yeah. And this is a completely brand new custom unit that's gonna go in a Ford nine inch housing, right? Correct. Got it. Exactly. Yep, I've got the new nine inch housing over here. It's, it's a bolt in. Yeah, nice. Yep. Front brakes, 13 inch, one and a quarter uh, width brake rotors. Uh, these are gonna go on four piston calipers. Um, I'm doing manual actually. I really like the feel of manual. I've got these exact same brakes. Here, mm -hmm. hold that. On the Mustang Coupe, I had a video previously about putting those on the Mustang Coupe and I love mm -hmm. it. You don't really need power with, with these brakes, um, especially with that road feel, if that's what you like to feel. These yeah. are excellent brakes for that option. I see vented and slotted, but you wanted to cheap out and didn't get cross drilled or? Well, yeah. Uh, I talked to Sean at Streeter Track and he said that really doesn't uh, add a ton of like, performance mm. so it's mostly for looks so gotcha. if, if you like the looks then you can you can do your drill but unnecessary for the most part looks like a nice unit here yep here's the here's the four pot caliper that goes to it nice oh, yeah. powder coat black um thought about doing the the larger one i could have gone with a 14 and a six uh piston caliper mm -hmm. but that would have required an 18 inch wheel and I want to run 17. So that's mm. why I went with the 13 where we'll have perfect wheel clearance inside that 17 inch wheel hoop. Got it. And, and there was something else about the front end where you got a custom spindle. Am I correct? That can, can accommodate a wider front wheel. Talk, tell, tell me a little bit about what that is. That's right. So here is a brand new part from Streeter Track. It's a billet drop spindle that will accommodate a really, really big wheel and tire up front. Um, I think a 315 will fit in like a 60, 69 Mustang. Again, mine's 67, but I'm gonna be running a nine and a half inch wheel with a 275 mm -hmm. in the front and in the rear. And this will fit it just fine with all this suspension stuff from Streeter Track. Got so, it. And so these are custom one-off pieces that are such that the geometry will allow that wide of a wheel without sacrificing the turning radius at all, correct? Well, they're not one-off anymore. Streeter Track's producing these and you can buy well, them from the website. But Yeah, these are the only, Streeter Track's the only place you can get these. Correct. Right? Yep. 
Gotcha. Yeah, so those are cool. That's and in fact, unit. these are pretty limited production at this point. I, I'm one of the first batches that uh, Sean sent out of these things. So excited to get this on the car and see what it looks like with 275s up front. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. I like it. Here's a uh, lower control arm. Again, this is part of the full suspension package. Basically, I got every new part for all the running gear under the Mustang from mm -hmm. Streeter Track. This is all stuff that's been re-engineered uh, with an application for street racing, although mine will be street driven only. Yeah. Um, but this is just really cool stuff that they make. So you're, you're basically not reusing anything original, right? From the, from the underpinnings of the car, everything from the transmission Correct. all the way down to the rear end, all the suspension, literally everything is going to be a new part that's re-engineered for performance. Exactly. Every suspension, steering, and brake component will be modified uh, mm. aftermarket. Nice. <laughs> this, you know what this is, Nick? No, because it's still in the packaging. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this is the uh, piece to the, the three link with a Watts link. Again, this is the rear suspension setup for the car. Um, I suppose we should have opened this up before we started shooting, huh? Yeah. Anyway, this is a pretty trick piece. Um, there's a lot of people that prefer a four link. A lot of people that think a three link is better. It's really personal preference and maybe what your application is, but this Watts link is a really cool piece that keeps the center completely aligned under the car, even under acceleration and hard cornering. So again, very much a performance inspired part that's gonna keep the rear of my car really planted. Mm -hmm. This gets mounted to the car, yep. to the frame rails. Yep. And then down here holds the diff slash axle in place. So as the car goes up and down, Correct. it holds everything straight in the middle. Exactly. And this rotates like this. This rotates, yep. As and it goes, and up, it goes and up and down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, that, that stays that way. Correct. This just rotates. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Should take that off because this is a money shot. Yeah. You'll have to use your teeth. Like I did. Did you use your teeth? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not above that. I think these connect to something, but I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so. stay tuned for a future video and I'll show you exactly how it hooks up. Yeah, good. But this is just a phenomenal piece. The quality on this is, is Unreal. So uh, you normally don't see a Watts link rear end on a street car. Is that on Mustangs? Is it only guys that are running them on the tracks that are using this or? Usually, although, I mean, this is going to be great for the street. It's not overkill. Yeah. Right. It might be overkill. It's probably overkill. That's okay. It's going to be cool though. That's good. Okay. Nice. Good. Put it away. Yeah, so that's the other part of the Watts Link rear end. Correct. That mounts, holds the diff in place, yep. keeps the rear end centered and located right there. Exactly. And again, this stuff is straight from Streeter Track. It already comes black powder coated, mm -hmm. really ready to rock. Instructions are in the boxes, so this is kind of a bolt-on. You don't have to have a, yeah. a shop like this one to put all the stuff in. Yeah. These type of joints right here, you see a lot of these that have this free motion that there's no wiggle room inside there, but you can articulate it left, right, up and down all over, which is really good because then it creates a suspension with almost no bind, which mm -hmm. is really important. Yep, that's cool. Yeah. Here's yeah. a new nine inch rear end um, housing that's going to connect all the Watts link rear suspension and rear coilovers um, that that strange center section is going to go in. Again, all brand new stuff straight from streeter track phenomenal quality this one's what's called a full floater which again that's a little bit different because typically you don't get the hubs um, riding the weight of the car so full floater is again typically a race application also overkill for a street car but i figure what the heck why mm -hmm. why short on the rear end and not go full floater and, and you have custom axles for this too right correct what axles are they i forget oh yeah, good question. <laughs> but I bet they're good. I bet they're nice. Yeah, good. Duty. Not that heavy. Yeah, or maybe my end's not that heavy. Yeah, let's put her down. Yeah, yeah that works. Okay, six-speed transmission from Tremec from Modern Driveline. The guys down in Idaho hooked it up with what's probably the most desirable pro touring muscle car transmission that you can buy. Mm -hmm. Again, might be overkill. You just picked up the TKX for your Impala, yep. five speed, which seems to shift really, really nice. Yeah. Also from modern driveline. So, you know, this has one more gear, 
um, it's all the rage. Yeah. It's a little bit tricky to get into a 67 Mustang because of the transmission tunnel will need to be widened in a couple spots. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's nothing that uh, yeah. impossible. It's a little bit bigger in this area here. So a little bit of floor pan modification, but won't be a big deal in yours since you're redoing floors anyways. Correct. It'll be less. Yep. And so uh, again, on a six speed, this T56, it has two overdrives. So that's why it's six speed instead of five. It's a double overdrive. Correct. Yeah. yeah. T56 refers to an older version. This yeah. is, is, I guess, actually called a Tremec Magnum six speed. Yeah. Um, based on the T56. Right, they make two versions of this, one that's got a 0.5 overdrive, one that's a 0.63, this one's a 0.63. Mm. Um, and again, it kind of specced out specific for the application that I'll be doing. And you're shifting it right now for the very first time. Yeah, perfect, I think you're supposed to do that. I don't, I don't think you are, but well, I shifted yours a ton this last week at, at the house, so. Okay, well, so we'll call it even. Okay, deal. Feels good, feels nice, I can tell. That's yeah. what it's going to be like in the car with that too, I think. Yeah, I might have to get a little bit longer of a, a shift lever though. You might. That one that came on this looks a little too short. It feels okay, but not that good. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. We can shift that. Back in the box, you shall go, transmission. All right. Bend with your back. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's one of the questions that I have, Evan. Yeah. One of the biggest questions I have about subframe connectors are... Yep what are subframe connectors because <laughs> all of my cars are body on a frame yeah and so i don't know what a subframe connector is what is a subframe connector? great question nick so on a unibody car specifically mustangs a lot of people like to put subframe connectors that tie in the front and the rear especially if the body is a little suspect or if the frame rails are a little bit weakened these can stiffen up a car if you're doing anything that's a race application, you want there to be a lot of rigidity in the body. And a unibody notoriously is not very rigid. So this is a bolt-on solution. So it stiffens up the, the chassis and the body of the car. It stiffens up the body and the chassis. And these specific ones I'll tell you about are cool because <laughs> This side is childproof. Uh, yeah. I think that's supposed to be on there. Yep, good. There we go. Yeah. So these ones are cool because again, they're from Streeter Track and they're already engineered to tie into that rear end uh, Watts setup. Mm. It actually ties the rear suspension with the front setup. So you, it's it. actually, you bolt it right to the, the frame uh, or you can weld them on but it, it really stiffens up the chassis so you don't have as much flex with uh, a body. Really good if you're doing road racing, less important if you're just driving it on the street, but again, if you've got a high horsepower car, anytime you gun it, you get some flex in the body, you get a little bit of twisting. This with the watts set up on the, the rear end uh, eliminates that and makes it perform a lot better. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. These are nice. Yeah. These powder, are nice. powder coated. Powder coated. Look really good. Yep. Yeah. That is nice. I've seen these before, and this is a nice one of these. I can tell just the yeah. way that it goes on there. That's a nice one. That is one of the nicest those yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah, a lot of times you see them and they're not this nice, but this <laughs> one is good. Yeah, well, these are uh, the trailing arm setup. Again, this also is part of the suspension, uh, stiffens up the rear, makes it so that you know when you're gunning it, you've got even uh, pressure uh, for the, the rear, things stay level and, and tight and uh, you don't have a whole lot of flex. Yeah, what does this piece do? That, I think, is the <laughs> column for the, the steering wheel. <laughs> this is where the blinker fluid goes, I yeah. think, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll so get this good. to somebody who knows more than we do about that part to put in. I think that'll be good, yeah. So the next interesting thing I'll show you here in a minute is the Dynacorn full floor pan that's going to be going in the Mustang. That's a little bit tricky to install because it requires some cross bracing in the actual body so that nothing gets unaligned after you cut the whole floor out because that's essentially what keeps things square. So we'll check out the full floor. I'll give you an update on what the Mustang body is looking like and all the new body panels we have. And uh, that'll round out the update on where the Mustang is right now and what the next steps are. Perfect, cool. So here we are in front of the Mustang. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't look like much, but 
we've got a whole lot of new metal since you've seen it last. The biggest piece though that I'm most excited about is the floor pan that's over here. And that's gonna require some bracing in the cab that'll have to go in and then cutting out literally everything in the Swiss cheese floor pan to put in this new Dynacorn floor that's right back here. Um, that's again the piece that's gonna require the most work and it's also the next step in this build process. A lot of people would probably ask at this point, shouldn't you have just bought or purchased a, sh a brand new shell instead of trying to fix this one? Because you've basically, you're pointing out a ton of new metal that you're replacing. New quarter panels, new fenders, new hood, new doors, trunk lid, hood, literally everything. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you could have gone that direction and maybe it would have saved money. But from my perspective, it's gonna be a little bit more authentic to have an original car versus just writing a check to get the Dynacorn full body that doesn't have a VIN. Uh, that's not actually a 67 Mustang, that's maybe a reproduction of a kit car. Um, that's an approach you could have taken, but that's not what I did and I'm too deep now to, to change gears on it. So it is what it is, onward and upward, I'm moving forward on it. Got it. So if you, if you could do it differently, would you? Or would you do exactly this again? I would do exactly this again. Okay. Happy with the acid dip versus the uh, media blast that a lot of people choose to do. Now I see exactly what panels need to be replaced and repaired, and there's just a lot of work to do, but time to get to it. Yeah, so here's the Dynacorn full floor. As you can see, this version comes basically as one piece with everything from the full trunk extension, the seat platforms here, the front frame rail extensions here, Dynacorn makes this piece that's a little bit different than some of the other vendors and I needed that all that stuff uh, On the car, so it made sense to get this full piece again It's gonna be a little bit of a trick to get in the car for the most part There's gonna have to be a little bit of modification done right here in the tunnel to have that t56 Magnum transmission fit in there, but besides that it's just the car that needs to be braced stuff needs to be cut out and the floor pan goes in as the next step and then rest of the body panels can be put on and we're off to the races then paint and body and i should be driving it in a couple of weeks right nick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks we'll see let's see oh one thing that a lot of people do if you're tall like me is yeah. you'll actually cut down these seat risers by an inch or so and that gives you uh, another inch or two of headroom when you're in the car uh, i've got some seats from tmi and so those cushions are known to sit a little bit higher than what uh, factory cushions sit. So a lot of people, if you're tall, which again, I am not, you wanna make that modification before you weld these things in so that you have enough headroom in your Mustang. What I am doing that again, makes this not that big of an issue is I'm putting in a single uh, ABS headliner that eliminates the old headliners that droop a little bit. And so that'll actually get me another inch or two of headroom without having to do this modification. So yeah. I should be good there. That additional headroom will come in handy um, because you're five, six. So it'll be, <laughs> it'll be good to have that extra yeah. on the top there. Well, you're same as me. So true. Five eights what I'm listed at. Yeah. <laughs> on your trading card. Good, <laughs> good. Yeah. I think that's all that's interesting on this. Right, Nick? Yeah, that's more than what was interesting on this, but yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. That was the update on the Mustang. If this is your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. We also have a couple of videos before this video that lead up to the Mustang, talk about the acid dip process that got you to this point. So check those out if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching the Classic Nation channel. We'll see you next week. Thanks.